Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to do some scroll saw work on this Popeye cartoon character. We're going to scroll him out on 5.5mm hardwood plywood and attach him to a 12mm hardwood plywood backer. Now for me, for the backer, I've just made sure I've drawn it out first. So I basically just got our template stuck down. I like to place carbon paper underneath. And I literally just went around the outer line. And that would be our backer all nicely done. So we can cut that out towards the end of the project. And basically what we're going to do is cut out the rest of the character on the 5.5 millimeter MDF. Now normally on scroll saw patterns projects you would literally line that with painted tape spray on some glue or some description just spray that on and stick your template down like so and the idea we are going to cut out all the white sections all the separate bits and then we'll stick them onto the backer that we've just mentioned because i had the carbon paper out i literally just popped it in and just drew it out the same way took a couple of minutes longer but that way we could use that again and again if we need to on future projects so that's as simple as it is really so we, we've drawn them all out so obviously we cut all cut all those sections out we'll cut out our backer as well I mean, you could leave that on there like that that shape if you wanted to but you then you're not going to see your backer so i'm going to cut it all out and as we cut out these sections we will glue them into the appropriate places like so and then once it's all painted hopefully we'll have some kind of scroll saw project right let's uh talk about the blades next okay just quickly there's three basic types of blade you get a pinless a pinned and a spiral blade it's a personal choice which one you want to use obviously pin blades they have pins at both ends they're ideal for this project they would work however we do have a couple of pilot holes to drill and we will just struggle getting those in because of those pins so they use a pinless blade it's very thin and obviously you can only have to drill a small hole and you can pop that in basically I'll just show you quickly back to the template we need to cut out these black sections here so we'll drill an hole and we'll slide that in now you might just get away with the pin blades sideways on but if you're doing a really small area if you imagine just having this section on its own you wouldn't fit that blade in because of those pins so then you use a pinless blade they come on your more fancier saws, should I say. And they literally just have a clamp, top and bottom. You have the teeth facing towards you, and they want to feel smooth on the way down and rough on the way up. Same with your pin blades. Smooth on the way down. One way or the other. Smooth on the way down and rough on the way up. And they just literally hook into a clamp at top and bottom. Now the blades I like to use are called spiral blades. The teeth are spiralled the full length of the blade. Still again, you want it smooth on the way down and rough on the way up. And it doesn't matter which way you put these blades in as regards to front and back, because obviously the teeth spiral. So they just have the, the clamp there and the clamp there. Unfortunately, with my old drapper scroll saw, I use these adapter clamps. And you just pop them in like so. A little Allen key in the side, tighten them up. And then we would hook that on as if it was similar to a pin blade the pegasus number five for me it's a little bit big for these small five millimeter 5.5 millimeter plywood there is one two threes and four the lower the number the finer the teeth and all the rest of it but a five i've used it on three millimeters up to two inches with no problem right we'll set this all up obviously if i can just find my piece of wood there it is we need to drill out our pilot holes. I've just marked them off simply with a little cross. There's 10 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 
and 10. So we'll drill 10 little holes with a drill. The bigger the drill I can find, the better. Just makes it easier for putting the blade into. So we'll pop that blade in there, obviously, connect it to our adapter clamps, and then we'll cut out that section, all those inner sections. And then obviously the rest should follow fairly easy afterwards. Okay, let's set it all up. We'll cut it out, and then we'll work out what kind of paint we're going to need. Right, we've done our 10 pilot holes. I just had a drill on the end of a flexi shaft and them holes are big enough and we just to say got them in for what we need there. Just in case of flicking it over, quick sanding down, that just makes it a little bit easier. I'm a bottom feeder, basically the blade goes in from the bottom. Some folk like to go through the top or whatever. It's a personal thing yet again. Right, that's it. Let's get this on our scroll saw and we'll start cutting these bits out. Right, that's the last of our inner cuts. Remember, we had 10 of those to do. I just want to show you quickly that I've learned as I've gone along the way. I'm not a scroller by any stretch of the imagination. I'd rather route this out, but it's nice to try something different. But you'll find with these spiral blades, as you're going as you're going round, you maybe not quite up to the line. You can literally go back and forwards like so with the blade and use it as a planer, a sander, a little chip away, whatever you want to call it. And you can just go like so, and go back and forwards, and nibble at that wood to get it up to the line. So I'll have to show you without turning the machine on, if you can hear the noise. And you just back and forwards like that. And that way you're basically just sanding away nicely but using the blade and hopefully you get something a little bit nearer. Okay, right, that's the hardy side done now with those 10 inner cuts. Now it's just a simple case of cutting all the rest out and we can look into a little bit of sanding down and a little bit of tidying up. Right, you can see from that, we've cut our, our 10 inner cuts, no problem. Now, I'm going to simply just restart with cutting out all these sections that we need remember we're going to stick all those sections onto our backer board now a lot of the other chaps they will drill a pilot hole literally alongside it and cut that tongue section out let's say and then drill an hole there and cut out the end of the pipe leaving this backer more or less in one piece and you can use that as a template so when you come to put it onto our backer remember we have this to cut out yet you imagine all this being cut out, it will leave you all these little thin lines there. Basically what's left on the scrap wood. And you could fit your scrap wood onto the backer, like so. And then all the pieces you've cut out, you can basically just slot them back into place. And glue them in and then remove this waste bit. And hopefully leaving all your cut out sections onto the backer. That's definitely an easier option. Personally myself, I'm just going to go in and just start cutting these all out. And then when I come to stick them on the backer, I'll just free eyeball it, as we say, and get it somewhere near as what I want.
Right, that's our main character, all nicely cut out. As I've cut each section out, I basically just got a bit of sandpaper and just take those little knobblies off the back. You can tell by looking at the back of these, there's no splitting or anything. So, hardwood, plywood, it served its purpose. And we've got no voids and no holes in the side. So, like I just said, we've sanded them all down nicely. We can just pop them on there roughly. That just gives a rough idea that we've got somewhere near what we're looking for. I just use sandpaper. You could use a sanding drum. Just as easy. Just to go along like that and clean it up. Also, you can get small files as another option. I don't use these personally. But you can get a small file, a nice flat edge. And if you want to, you could file that down just the same. It's entirely up to you what you use and what's going to work for you. Right, so we have the backer to cut out next. Nice and easy. Won't mess about with that one. And then hopefully we're heading towards the painting side of things. I'll quickly cut out the backer board. Right, that's all our backer cut out. You can see from that, that cut no problem whatsoever. That's 12 millimeter the backer, remember? The actual character himself is a 5.5 millimeter. And we'll just show you quickly on the back. You can see the little nodules there, they call them. Quick sanding down, and you're good to go. So a quick tidy up with this one. Looking through, it's all nice and solid again. Can't see any voids in there. There's a couple there, look, those little bits here. We've got a bit of wood filler, a bit of glue and sawdust, and we'll just fill them in quickly. And there's another little one there, look. That's nothing to be concerned about. We'll soon fill those in. Remember, we're going to paint all this black, so you're not going to see any of that once it's painted. So I'll give this a quick tidy up, and then we'll come back and we can start filling up the top with our character that's cut out, Popeye. And then we have a visual what it looks like. And then we can look into the painting side of things. Right, that's enough general tidying up and sanding down for me. I've slightly rounded the edges off all the way around on the backer and the little bits that we've cut out along the way. So that's somewhere near enough for what I need for this little project. So the next stage is to basically paint it. I'm going to go for the brightest colours I can find. So we need a nice painted touch red. This is just brush on paints. You could prime these, use can spray paint, whatever you want. Just too much work for me. So a little painter's touch or acrylic paints, I suppose. And literally just paint them straight on. And then we'll see what the finish is like as regards to spraying a little bit of varnish on maybe. They are gloss paint, so they should have a nice shine to them. But if not, we will spray a bit of varnish on. And there's a nice black. Remember, that's going to be for the back board. So I'll go ahead, paint all this, and hopefully come back when we're ready to stick it down with some Gorilla Glue. Just to stick those pieces down to the back board. And like I say, we'll spray a bit of varnish on, should be needed. And this little project should be finished. We'll come back when this is all nicely painted. Right, you can see from that we've painted all our bits down. Certainly had no issues with the the red, the yellow and the white. I just couldn't get a mix to go rightly for the face, so I better go onto a bit of acrylic paint and just water down that what give it kind of a wash over. You can just about make out the difference on the back there, look. 
so it's just enough to say that we've gave it some kind of color and obviously we just mixed a bit of white and red together to give him a nice pink for his tongue and the black is no problem for the back of board and i also did the back of that piece just while we had the brush to hand now it's just a simple case of gluing it all together putting everything in place i'm just going to use simple gorilla glue and it will be a simple case of three or four dabs dab 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 like so and then we'll stick that down you can find your own glue for you there's different types out there one time i would put clear resin on this and stick that down with the resin or brush resin on the back of there stick that down wood glue maybe a bit awkward i think you might find as you're squeezing that on there your glue is going to come out the side and make it a little bit messy so it's just a case of finding what works for you so really good for that one so we're not going to miss much there so we'll put it all together it's not as shiny as i thought so i'm going to use some polyurethane spray it could be yacht varnish clear gloss whatever's at hand and we'll just spray this first the backer and then we'll spray the full piece afterwards basically because obviously the acrylic paint is slightly duller then the gloss one you can see the difference here in this lighting so we would spray the full piece afterwards and hopefully this little project will be finished right i'll just quickly put all this together i'm sure we've seen people putting glue on the back before so we're not missing anything and then we'll come back once we've sprayed it and this project is finished Right, that's it. This little project is finished. We finished off with the polyurethane spray. Remember, we stuck it all down with some nice Gorilla Glue and we painted it all with Painter's Touch paints. And I'm quite happy with that. It's done its purpose. It's all nicely stuck down. You might just see, see a bit of shine on there, look, from that spray. I do like a bit of shine on my projects at the end and that just finishes that off nicely for hanging purposes i'll pop a little hook on the back or you could have routed out a slit in there no problem whatsoever and that's it this little project is finished so popeye measured in at 11 inches by 15. we did the main character on 5.5 millimeter hardwood and then we stuck it to a 12 millimeter backer we cut it all out with a Pegasus number no. five spiral blade. Then obviously painted touch paint, paint should I say, polyurethane varnish to finish off, and we glued it all down with Gorilla Glue. Just nice, fun, fun projects. Thank you very much for watching.